The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products, and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. We want your soul. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic. It's Alex Jones. Bottom line, I want to defend the human continuity. We have seed banks. The globalists have emergency seed and arc banks because they know they're rewriting the entire genetic code of the planet. In case things go wrong, they have a backup. What about a backup for humanity? Undoubtedly, uh, the the eugenicists that developed biometrics in 1860s and uh, envisioned the genetic code and the double helix that has been the ancient sign of medicine for 6,000 years. The ancients knew a lot more, folks, uh, than the modern historians um, will tell you. And that's all part of the secret societies. That's all part of the Illuminati, the priest class that Daniel Estelin was so eloquently, investigative journalist, best-selling author, sold tens of millions of copies of his nonfiction books uh, in Europe. He's also written novels uh, that are basically like Pachinic, real, but the names are changed to protect the innocent. And um, a lot of important information at his website as well, and I will give you that address. It's danielestelin.com. I know his site, but he's got several, several others up there, but that's... That's the main one. It's an excellent site. But I want to talk to him about free will because that's what he's getting at here. This is freedom versus slavery. I'm not against humans developing and advancing. The problem is the spirit that animates, uh, the ghost that animates the globalist machine is very anti-human, very predatory. 
hey, let the troops use DU, let them die. Hey, let the Navy drive through the radiation and let the troops be in wheelchairs and catheterized and dying. So what? Uh, but then have football games, how much we love the troops. The globalists hate pure, good, loving people. They hate uh, altruistic knights. More and more I realize that they are threatened by good people because they've cheated to get into control and they can't help their psychopathic and sociopathic and other, you know, uh, criminology designations. And it is a predatory group that's infested civilization since its beginnings. So I want to ask Daniel Estelin, we need to put out, because obviously no one's going to stop this march forward, and the church is so controlled, they just say, oh, the world's going to end next week, don't worry about it. And obviously that's not what's going on here. There's a great challenge coming. We need to be the salt of the earth, and I'm asking you what you think we should do, to say, hey, there is advanced breakaway civilization. It's 30, 40 years ahead, the globalists say. A, how advanced are they in the breakaway civilization in the corporate and government reservations? And B, what is an alternate vision where we can try to capture the imagination of the public about what's really happening so they're not obsessed with Justin Bieber and they're obsessed more with giant space colony missions to the nearest star systems and habitable planets and the real trailblazer, master uh, builder spirit of humanity? These are very good questions, Alex. Very, very good questions. You can summarize it, uh, I think, the following way. You know, you have to understand that um, the people who are our enemy are not the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, but just the names. Um, but it's uh, it's it's a different movement. Uh, one of the things I talk about in the book is this transhumanist movement. We're taking as this vector for the future mega projects such as Russia 2045 movement, which they intend to create this new civilization aimed at future human development and evolution by integrating these new discoveries and developments from science, from physics, you know, energetics, aeronautics, bioengineering, nanotechnology, uh, neurology, cybernetics, cognitive science, and on and so forth. And the Rockefellers of this world really have nothing to do or to say in this matter because they will have been dead by then. But the point is that the transhumanists, and I think the face of transhumanism is Ray Kurzweil, one of the greatest inventors of the 20th century. Unfortunately, a lot of the things that are being done by him right now have very little to do with helping humanity. He was one of, he's the, uh, uh, the uh, head of Google uh, uh, development. He thinks he's going to become God. That's right, exactly, Ray Kurzweil. Now, the whole idea behind this transhumanist movement, if you want to know what it is, it's the symbol is H+, plus, human plus transhuman, is this ultra-high-tech dream of computer scientists, philosophers, neuroscientists, and many others to use radical advances in technology to augment the human body, human mind, and ultimately the entire human experience. And these people wish to become post-human which is someone who has been modified <clears throat> with performance enhancing body, not drugs, body and brain augmentations to the point that they could no longer call themselves human, which is why, again, the Rockefellers have nothing to do with it. And this. they describe us like bugs that, okay, you don't have to get augmented, but you'll be like a bug. We might step on you. And, and, and my issue is that Google and the rest of them at the head of this um, – the systems are all being designed to control. They they claim on the surface it's a system to empower, but I don't see that at the heart of oh, it. No, you're absolutely right. You got it. You're absolutely right. You're one of the few people who said it exactly how it is. Look, neurochip interfaces, computer chips that connect directly to the brain are being developed right now. And the ultimate goal of the brain chip will be to increase intelligence thousands of times over, basically turning the human brain into the supercomputer. Lifelong emotional well-being is also a key concept you know, for the transhumanist movement. And they can achieve this through a recalibration of the pleasure centers in the brain. Pharmaceutical mood renders have been suggested. Wireheads. Exactly, which will be cleaner and safer than the mind-altering drugs. This is Huxley's 21st century ver uh, vision of scientific dictatorship without tears. But behind all of this, no matter how you look at it, you know, this technology is uh, something that, you know, we've talked about a lot before. It's the transhumanist movement. And the post-humanity, you know, will be a new human which has been genetically engineered and brain chipped for total control, part man and part machine. This new man will no longer have a need of the sexual reproductive function. That's right. And the least plan is to reduce the world's population 
You know, I can't think of a better way to do that. And not only that, but was through synthetic biology, they're changing our DNA through genetically modified crop. They can literally create beings who are not human that have never existed on the planet Earth. So why do they need men and women, you know, as a couple? They don't need that anymore, which is why, as you said on your website yesterday, I think it was, you know, talking about the Illuminati agenda at the last Grammy Awards. Well, look, this was exactly why they're pushing it. And this is one of the reasons why they hate people like Putin, who is absolutely against this kind of an agenda. That's right. And, and, and here's the key. I want to ask you this point. They're toxifying the environment on purpose. Then the crisis comes. They use that to bring in Agenda 21 and neo-feudalism to shut people down for social control so we can then follow their scientific dictatorial edicts, always posing as the savior and clearly destroying reproductive fertility, clearly wrecking humanity where it's going to be impossible to live in the civilization unless you accept the transhumanism, uh, it is simply, simply amazing. This, this is beyond a, a H.P. Lovecraft book. It's beyond a brand, uh, you know, a Dracula. Uh, this is, this is literally something out of the mind of the devil. Well, Alex, you know, these technologies, and again, you've talked about this, are not being developed to stop the terrorists but rather to stop us, the people. And the laws to justify these technologies, they're not written on a whim. They're specifically designed to give the government carte blanche authority over the people during the chaos and confusion of the period we're in right now, which the elite call the age of transition, transition to a planetary civilization. And I think people have to realize that the Bin Lans and the Gaddafis are not the enemy. They never were the enemy. We, the people, are the enemy. That's right. We are allowing ourselves to be seduced by this, as we cover in my film, Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, that yeah. you're in. And when that came out eight years ago, it was a big hit because people thought it was science fiction. Now they're watching it. The film's more popular than it's ever been because now it almost all came true eight years later. You know, I used to buy boxes of your film, Alex, you know, and, you know, go on trips because I travel a lot. Last year I did 240,000 kilometers, about 200,000 miles of traveling around the world. And I used to give your CDs of your films away to people. And they're saying, who is this Alex Jones character? I said, watch the film and you'll realize. And again, please understand those who are watching and listening to us right now. These are not publicly funded projects for the betterment of humanity, but they're mostly secret experiments sanctioned in the name of defense, which when you put it on its head is crime prevention and extrapolated into the future is tailor made to pull down any rebellion by the 99% of the world's population destined to live in abject poverty and crime infested megacities of the future, just as the Strategic Trends Report talks about, which I read way, way, way back in 2005, almost 10 years ago, and so much, if not all of it, is you know coming true. And that's what's unraveling. incredible. That's what's incredible. And people need to understand, they go, well, I don't care if the NSA watches me or whatever, because I've done nothing wrong. Well, why don't you live in a glass house then? Why don't you, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm tempted to dress up like an agent, you know, uh, in black, a, a man in black, and then go look in people's windows in broad daylight and see them call the police on me. And I'm going to say, well, what's wrong? The government does it just to illustrate with a camera crew or to go up people on the street and say, do you mind if uh, you, know, you, you wear clean, a, a clear raincoats just to make sure you're not carrying a weapon? And they'll go, well, of course, I'm not going to do that. And go, well, wait, New York's already trying to make people only have clear bags. You know, the point is, we're being trained to be slaves, not even to be enslaved, but to stand down so we can be erased. Daniel, let me ask you this question. Do you think they're going to succeed? What does your gut tell you and what is the time frame? Because you know, I, I, I don't know the time frame is because, again, one of the things about this book, and it's a bit unnerving in the sense that it asks more questions than it answers because, again, we're talking about the future. But I think, you know, what is absolutely undeniable is this divine spark of reason, which makes us so different from anything else on this planet, can never be replicated. No matter whether your name is Ray Kurzweil, you know, uh, Jason Silva, or any one of these other characters, billionaires and zillionaires, who want to literally turn us into something we're not. Men, machine, you know, future post-humans, uh, beings who are not fully human. Sure. They will never be able to ever well, be able to replicate. Exactly. He says from a storage thing full of his dad's papers 
he's going to resurrect his father. There is no way Ray Kurzweil is going to resurrect his, his real father. He may have a computer that can fool him, uh, and, and, and he thinks it's his father, and he says he doesn't believe.